It was December on the island of Sodom. All the engines were getting ready for Christmas. Bernard had been on the railway for two months after a fat controller purchased him after his colliery on the main had closed. He was settling in well. As he backed into the shed one day, he noticed a Christmas tree on the platform of Arlesborough West. Ah, uh, what's that? Is that a Christmas tree? Bernard asked. Oh, yes it is, said Tom. Oh, right, said Bernard. Have you celebrated Christmas before? asked Duck. Mm, I can't say I have, said Bernard. What? You've not celebrated Christmas before? No, not really. At the colliery, we were still working even on Christmas Day. We were working 365 days a year, so we can keep the coal flowing. There were trains to collect the coal, take them to the power stations, even to power the industries, all that sort of stuff. Donald and Douglas were surprised. Oh, why you never celebrated Christmas before, Bernard? Back on the Caledonian, we always used to celebrate Christmas, Hogmanay, and Bird's Night. Hogmanay? What's Hogmanay? asked Bernard. Donald and Douglas explained what Hogmanay was. And to top it all off, when New Year strikes, we would sing Old Lang Syne. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and old Lang Syne? Right, said Bernard. That's a shame that you've never celebrated Christmas before, said Oliver. We just didn't have time for it, I suppose, replied Bernard. The engines who we were supplying the cow to always used to wish us Merry Christmas. Even the woodhead engines. Hey up, Merry Christmas. We don't really do Christmas here though. Oh, hey up, that's a shame. And even the diesels on the other side of the colliery too. Have a wonderful Christmas. Thanks, but we don't really do Christmas here. Oh, right. Nevertheless, it's the season to be jolly. I've not celebrated Christmas once, said Bernard. Then he puffed away to fetch his ballast tree. Oh, that's a shame, said Douglas. We'd better speak to the fat controller about this, said Doug. We need to give Bernard a proper Christmas. The small engines overheard the conversation, and when Bernard backed down to his ballast trucks, they began asking questions. Have you ever seen a Christmas tree before? asked Bert. Uh, I think I have. I saw it in the churchyard near the colliery, I think. Yeah, I think that was it. Have you ever sung Christmas carols? asked Rex. What's a Christmas carol? Oh, said Mike. You don't know that much about Christmas at all. Christmas carols, said Rex, are joyful songs that we sing around Christmas time. I see. Said Bernard. You have a lot to learn about Christmas, don't you, Bernard? I guess I do, said Bernard, and puffed away. The news soon reached Knapford. Molly was there with Wilfred. You'll never believe this, but Bernard's never celebrated Christmas before. Oh, my said Molly. Surely we can get the fat controller to give him a proper Christmas. After all, he's on his railway now, 
And that surely is not too much to ask the Fat Controller. Or maybe I can ask Sir Robert Norrenby, said Wilfred. He's preparing his Christmas party up at the castle. And maybe Bernard could come there. I'm here fetching supplies and... Uh... Wilfred dozed off. Oh, dear. Wake up, Wilfred, said Molly. You're due to go in a minute. Oh, oh yes, uh, so I am. Sorry. The guard's whistle blew and Wilfred puffed away. When Wilfred reached the castle, he told Glyn and Neil the news. You know this burned engine that the Fat Controller bought from that colliery? Uh, yes. What is it, Wilfred? He's never celebrated Christmas before. He will. He even worked on Christmas Day. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? said Neil. I think we should probably ask the Earl to get him up here so he can celebrate Christmas with us. That's a good idea. But he is the Fat Controller's engine, you know. Still, we could probably ask the Fat Controller too. Or at least, the Earl can. Yes, but something must be done. That burning engine needs to be given a proper Christmas. Wilfred dozed off again, whilst his trucks were being uploaded. Oh, Wilfred, there's no desire to be dozing off! But Wilfred didn't hear him. The news soon reached the Fat Controller, and he had a plan. As the first snow fell on the island, the Fat Controller spoke to Bird. On Christmas Eve, I would like you to get a goods train from Barrow. It is full of minute presents, cards, and parcels. Will you be able to do it? Yes, sir. I would, sir, said Bernard. That's a good ending. Then, as Bernard puffed away, he spoke to Molly. Molly, I want you to go to Vickers Town and pick up Walter the Woodhead Engine from the Vickers Town Railway Museum. After Bernard has passed Vickers Town, you'll be able to proceed with Walter to Nathru. There, Duck will take him all the way to Alsborough West. Right, sir, said Molly. The news soon reached Duck as well. Right, sir, said Duck. Christmas Eve arrived and all the engines were pulling the last trains before Christmas Day. Thomas had extra passengers on his branch line. Gordon had more passengers on the express. The passenger trains were full of people returning home for Christmas. That afternoon, Bernard puffed across the island towards Vickers Town. But what he didn't know was that Molly was waiting with Walter behind her. As Bernard passed, the coast was clear. All right now, said Molly. Bernard has passed. Now is our chance. Let's go. Molly puffed away with Walter in tow. Walter had been well informed of the surprise that they were going to give Bernard for Christmas. As the light faded and Molly puffed along the countryside, Walter remarked, Hey, you it's a long time since I've properly stretched my wheels since wood had closed. Molly chuckled. <laughs> well, cherish this moment. Oh yeah, I will, laughed Walter back. Soon, they reached Napford. And Walter was given over to Doug, who proceeded to take him all the way up the Little Western to Alsborough West. Right then, Walter, away we go. Meanwhile, Bernard puffed through the night with all the last minute deliveries, presents, and cards. He stopped at every station, and by the time he got to Napford, 
He was tired, but triumphant. <sighs> that was a job and a half, said Bernard. I think I need to go to sleep. You're right, said his driver. There's a shed right here. You'll be able to make it to Arlesborough West tomorrow morning. And so Bernard backed into the shed. Early on Christmas Day, Bernard puffed into Arlesborough West. And to his surprise, a chorus of whistles and cheers echoed in the air. Merry Christmas, Bernard! Called Duck. What is this? gasped Bernard. Hey up! said Walter. Season's greetings! Uh, Walter! gasped Bernard. What are you doing here? I, I can't believe it! This is your first proper Christmas, Bernard! I heard everything! laughed Walter. We all thought it was a shame that you hadn't celebrated Christmas properly, said Oliver. Indeed, said the Fat Controller. Dockers told me everything. Bernard was speechless. Also, it gives me great pleasure to present you with two new auto coaches, Carol and Joyce. Hello, Bernard, the two coaches said happily. Oh, thank you, sir! I'm d d d genuinely at a loss for words! But before Bernard could say anything else, a whistle filled the air. Is that a t -t Truro? It was. Why, season's greetings, Montague. Merry Christmas. T -t Truro? What are you doing here? Well, I'm here to run excursion trains to the mainland until New Year's Day, starting from tomorrow. Oh, hello there, Bernard, said the city. Oh, hello, Truro. What might you be doing here then? Well, Bernard explained how the Fat Controller brought him after his colliery was closed. Well, I say this is the perfect home for you. And then, the city of Truro noticed the old EM1 sitting in the shed. That's Walter, said Bernard. He was explaining about Walter when they heard a horn. Darrell rolled in. Why, season's greetings, steamers, he said happily. The engine was shot. Well, what might you be doing here, too? asked Donald. I am helping Truro with his excursion runs. Why, indeed you are, said the Fat Controller. They all heard the story of Darrell pushing James over the main line faster than he usually went. Doc wanted Daryl to explain it again, so Daryl did. As the bells rang and everybody went to church during Christmas morning, Bernard could not feel happier that he had had his first proper Christmas. He now loves his two new coaches, Carol and Joyce, and they love him too. The city of Truro and Daryl's excursion roads were a great success. On New Year's Eve, they both went back to the other railway feeling very happy. Bernard was glad to meet them 